Good afternoon, and my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2018. Let me provide you with a little background of Dr. Evans. Dr. Audrey Edgerson Evans was born in York, England, and completed her med medical degree at the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons in Edinburgh, Scotland. In, 19 in 1953, a Fulbright Fellowship brought Dr. Evans to the United States, specifically Boston's Children's Hospital, where she trained under the supervision of a legendary Dr. Stanley Farber, the father of chemotherapy. It was here that Dr. Evans found her true calling, treating children with cancer. A world-class oncologist in her own right, and renowned in the area of pediatric oncologic research, Dr. Evans was recruited by Dr. C. Edward Koop, former Surgeon General of the United States, to be the first Chief of Pediatric Oncology at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. In 1971, she developed the Evans Staging System, which enabled doctors to analyze tumor progress and determine an optimal treatment plan. Her efforts resulted in an astounding 50% decrease in mortality rates for children with neuroblastoma. As head of the oncology department in CHOP, Dr. Evans also was instrumental in training dozens of researchers in pediatric oncology. Recognizing the needs of families whose children were faced with prolonged hospitalizations for cancer treatment, Dr. Evans conceived the idea of the Ronald McDonald House. In 1974, along with then Philadelphia Eagles General Manager Jimmy Murray, she co-founded the Ronald McDonald's Charities and established the original Ronald McDonald House in Philadelphia. Dr. Evans is Chair Emerita of the Philadelphia Ronald McDonald House Board of Directors. Today, there are over 350 Ronald McDonald Houses worldwide in 63 countries, which have served over 7 million children and their families. Dr. Evans also was influential in establishing in 1987 the Ronald McDonald Camps, which provide a cost-free, medically supervised residential camp experience for children with cancer and for children who have survived cancer. Siblings and parents of these young cancer victims may also attend. Throughout her career, Dr. Evans has advocated a total care and family-centered approach to cancer treatment, treating the child in addition to supplying social, emotional, and spiritual support to the entire family. Dr. Evans has been awarded numerous honors in the field of pediatric oncology, including the Janeway Award, the American Society of Pediatric Hematology Oncology Distinguished Career Award, the Spectrum Award of the American Red Cross, the Alpha Delta Kappa International Woman of the Year Award, and the Osler Award from the University of Pennsylvania. Following her retirement from CHOP in 2009, Dr. Evans applied her total care approach to the field of education and co-founded the St. James School, a faith-based Philadelphia middle school in the Episcopal tradition committed to educating traditionally under-resourced students. Dr. Evans currently serves on the school, school's board of directors. Dr. Evans views making a difference in the lives of children as her mission in life. It is impossible to quantify the impact she has made in the lives of so many children. Yet, while her medical accomplishments are legendary and her philanthropy astounding, Dr. Evans simply wants to be remembered as a woman who cares. And it is my distinct privilege today to nominate her for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Thank you. and hereby admit you to all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining to this degree.
Thank you for those remarks, the inward introduction. And I think really probably they said enough, so I could uh, sit down and say thank you very much. <laughs> but my kind husband, oh, he wrote all happens and said, stick to your text and don't wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those introductory remarks in your kind words. I am honored to receive this degree, particularly this degree, from a Christian university because I believe my gifts, whatever they may be, um, um, flourish on the rich soil of my Christian heart. I grew up in England, the third child of middle class Christian parents. I went to Quaker school in York and was fortunate enough to get into medical school in Edinburgh, Scotland. After graduation, I worked as a junior doctor. Uh, where am I now? <laughs> <laughs> At the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, the main teaching hospital at that university, a Fulbright Fellowship in the U.S. government took me here, where I spent two and a half years training at the Children's Hospital in Boston and at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. When I returned to Britain, I found that general pediatrics was covered by local practitioners and there's some good things about that of having family practice, so somebody watching over the whole family, and then more specialty pediatrics in the hospital. So specialty pediatrics was a teaching hospital service headed by men and not women. I thus found I was the wrong sex and overtrained for what I wanted to do. So I came back here and soon became heavily involved in pediatric oncology, which is a specialty dealing with children with cancer. The disease was not was nearly incurable. Most of the boys and the girls died. Apparently, I had a special success being able to talk to children about life in general, but in, in particular about death and dying. My upbringing taught me that when we die, we go to heaven. Thus I could discuss with children what their image of heaven was like. And that it was a real place. Once a boy asked me whether he could play his bongo drums in paradise. I said, of course, everyone will enjoy your play. He replied, oh, that'll be great. <laughs> Nowadays, dealing with death and dying in pediatric oncology is much less healing, fortunately. The cure rate for these unfortunate children has gone up from about 25% to 85% or more during my years in the field. My major mentor was Dr. Sidney Farber. He taught us that a sick family, the sick child, was part of a sick family. It was our responsibility to look after not only the patient, but the whole family as well. He coined the term total care to convey that, that lesson. So together with Jimmy Murray, and the manager of the football team, I started the Ronald McDonald Houses with the crucial help from the Philadelphia Eagles and the Ronald McDonald Charities. These houses, you probably all know, are uh, houses away from home for families of hospitalized children. They are places where members of the family can stay, cost-free if need be, while the, the hot child in hospital is under the care. There are hundreds of these scattered around the group. 
I am proud of being responsible for starting such a worthwhile program. So at the age of 93, I think you would assure that my life work is over. But not so. In the last two months, I have attended nine board meetings, <coughs> fundraising events, planned sessions, and board meeting, meetings included those of the St. James School. Here, that I hope to start in North Philadelphia. It is a tuition-free school, a few which we founded a few years back, available to the students of the Allegheny West area. But uh, before closing, that I uh, may say I am an, that I too am an immigrant who is eternally grateful for this country for giving a young lady doctor opportunities to grow and to serve my fellow men opportunities that were no longer available to, to me at home, and opportunities that should not be designed in our present day to would be other immigrants. I'm looking bad, and by the way, I didn't come from Sweden or Norway. <laughs> looking bad, not a bad record for an immigrant, even though not a Norwegian. 